I love the Lord. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter number six. How many remember what we preached last week? Amen. 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 We preached about a slow fast. All right. Hallelujah. Amen. I talked to one, one of uh, the new converts came up to me and told me he had went on a seven day fast. Amen. How many have ever fasted seven days? Pull up your hand if you've ever fasted seven days. Hallelujah. We're talking no food. Amen. Amen. When I say fast, that means no food. Okay. Hallelujah. Amen. And a new convert, amen, just been in the church a few months, said, I'm not going to tell you who it was. He said, been fasting. He fasted, and the Lord told him to fast seven days. And he did, and he got a tremendous blessing. Amen. Hello? Amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. I think it's time for some people who've been in the church a little while to listen to the same voice that God's talking to new converts with. Amen. Boy, it got quiet on that. They'll amen me when I'm preaching on fasting, but when it comes down to doing it, well, that's all right. How many will launch out? Praise God. The Ninevites fasted three days. Their cattle fasted three days. Their dogs fasted three. Their babies fasted three days. Hello? Right, amen. Hello? They really didn't have any written guarantee. Amen. Uh, they, didn't, they didn't have Isaiah 58 to read from as we do. Amen. But they, amen, fasted and they cried mightily and God honored both of those. Amen. And we have covered prayer and fasting. How many believe God put those two doctrines together? Amen. Giving. Amen. Hallelujah. By say giving. So you can be more like your God. How many want to be more like the God you serve? Amen. Instead of the selfish old bag that you used to be. Amen. Some of y'all used to be pretty selfish. I pastored you a while. Amen. But God's patient. I was patient. Hallelujah. But I know God is trying to make us like him. How many want to be like the God you serve? How many glad you don't serve a stingy God? Oh, yes. Matter of fact, he, he healed you, never sent you a bill. He didn't, even, he didn't even make it a commandment to repent. You just asked him and he gave you a healing. And hospitals, well, you wait till the hospitals send you a bill for just little things. And you'll appreciate a healer in your life. And a savior in your life. Amen. And an advocate, a lawyer in your life. Come on. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. So, hallelujah. All of these things, amen, get us, amen, closer to God and our character to be more like the God that we do serve. How many want to be more like God? Amen. And less like the God of the world. Kind of, amen. Look at some things here. Pray that they can help you. Hallelujah. So let's move on. Amen. After he talks about fasting, amen. In verse 19, we'll begin our text to expedite time here. Amen. It says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. Hallelujah. That's what thieves do. Amen. Hallelujah. They break in and steal. God, they don't work for it. Amen. Matter of fact, I try to make it so if somebody does steal something, they got to work at it. They'll think, you know, maybe I ought to be working at something else. Because when you get in the church, you quit stealing. Quit stealing from God. Quit stealing from your employer. 
Well, how many want to go to heaven? Yes. Praise God. Hallelujah. Woo. Yes. Amen. I remember when I was working for, for Hardee's. Praise God. My friends come through. I gave them a free meal. Hamburger, Coke, whatever. Wasn't mine, but I, I was stealing because I was giving it something away that wasn't mine. Some people can't even look up here when I'm preaching this. Hallelujah. That's got me concerned. Hello? Come on, somebody. Woo, this is good preaching. Because no thief is going to get in, are they? Right? Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Who are you preaching to? Well, everybody's here, I guess. Everybody's got an ear. Fill them things, them appendages on the side. Those things will save you if you. Hello? You don't steal from your mother's purse or her house. Woo. My goodness. Mm, mm, mm. I like that. I like, I like that one. I was practicing a song, and uh, amen. This. A uh, minister got up and he said, he said, he said, clap your hands. And he said, he said, some of y'all need to shout and get out of that pew. But he said, when you get out of that pew, he said, take your pocketbook. Because not everybody in the church is saved. And I thought, and everybody was smiling. I saw everybody out there was just smiling like, yeah, we understand. Not everybody is saved. Because if they'll rob God, they'll rob from you. If they rob God, they have no fear of God. They have no fear of you. None. Hallelujah. Praise God. So, amen. So, amen. And by say thieves, break through and steal. Amen. And what are they stealing? They're stealing, amen, treasures that are temporal. Amen. Everybody say temporal treasures that's what yeah, that's why you got to lock things up we're already preaching but we'll get we'll get on some things here but lay up for yourselves treasures and by say treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal you know why because there ain't going to be no thieves in heaven. <laughs> Y'all understand that? How many believe there's not going to be any fornicators in heaven? Not going to be any unfaithfulness in heaven. Now, do you want an apostolic preacher? Or to, amen. Or do you want a yellow page Baptist preacher? Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm just I'm just preaching the word here. So let's let's look at let's look at what Jesus has to say. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. That's why it's important to put your treasure toward heavenly things, because that's what your heart will follow. Where your treasure is, it says your heart will follow. Amen. How many have ever seen a sunflower? You know why they're called sunflowers? Because they follow the sun. Who made it that way? Amen. That sunflower starts at dawn and it follows the sun all day long. Until it gets older. And when it gets older and it's full of those big old seeds, you know what it does? It faces east. The mark of a brand new day. And that's where it dies. Facing that direction. When it gets mature. Amen. But it follows its maker. Hello. It's God made the sun. Hallelujah. And that sunflower is called a sunflower. Not just because it looks yellow. Okay. <laughs> Amen. But somebody figured out that thing follows the sun. Hallelujah. 
Amen. So, hallelujah, as the sunflower follows the sun, our heart follows the treasure. Amen. I'm going to believe when you're born again, God made you that way. Amen. Hallelujah. And how many want to be full of the word of God? Amen. And looking for a brand new day? Come on. Behold the sunflowers, how they grow. Everybody say praise the Lord. Praise so, the Lord. amen. He gives us, he gives us some very important Amen. Instruction here. Amen. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. Has two meanings here. But if thine eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light or the understanding that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? Or if it, amen, if, if, we live in an age where they have put darkness for light. Amen. Hallelujah. And if, amen, what someone is calling light is actually darkness and you believe it, then your whole life can be filled with that darkness. Amen. And then he says, no man can serve two masters. Either he will... I need my glasses. I think that says hate. Does that say hate? Yes. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold to the one and despise. So, hallelujah, you need to hate and despise the things, hallelujah, amen, that used to master you. All right? Everybody say hate. hate. Everybody say despise. despise. Praise God. Don't hate your brother. Right. Hate the devil. Yes. And hate, hallelujah, the things that he calls treasure, things he calls prosperity and success. Hallelujah. You say, can you have things? Yeah, God gives you things. Right. Hallelujah. But, amen, riches make themselves wings. Why there's an eagle on the dollar bill. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Riches make themselves wings. Hallelujah. But how many believe, amen, what the Lord says you cannot. Everybody say you cannot. Yeah. Didn't say you should not. It said you cannot serve God and the world. Amen. How many want a, a Christian experience of peace and righteousness? You can't have one foot in the church and one in the world. Hello? Amen. Hallelujah. How many will help me preach tonight? Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Want to help you tonight? Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. How many need some help? Hold up your hand if you need help. Amen. Praise God. How many still need help? Hallelujah. Amen. I need help. How many need help every day? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's see if the Lord can give us some things that will help us tonight. Clap your hands. Shout hallelujah. And everybody say treasure. Amen. You've got to choose your treasure. To choose your crown. All right? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Now, hallelujah. Amen. I want to take you, amen, uh, this evening, amen, to the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 12 and verse number 13. And uh, this is where this, this teaching begins. Amen. By the Lord. A man came to him, and uh, evidently his father had passed away, and there was an inheritance to be divided among the family. Praise God. And uh, he came to the Lord, and he wanted him to be a lawyer. 
and divide the inheritance. Now, inheritances can get pretty nasty, especially when you're dealing with nasty people. But let me just give you, amen, hallelujah, some good news. God's got a greater inheritance. Let the other kids fight over things. Praise God. God will not only bless you more in this world, but also we have an inheritance, amen, of the saints in life. Hallelujah. Our Heavenly Father is going to take care of us. Can you say praise the Lord? Amen. Now, hallelujah. He wanted, evidently, his brother had uh, the uh, uh, power of attorney or had, amen, something. And he wanted it divided rightfully. Amen. And so the Lord's response to this was, man. <laughs> He said, who made, who made me, amen, hallelujah, a judge or a divider over you? Right. Amen. He could have said God, but he didn't know who he was talking to. Now, the Lord, amen, went on from this and he turns to his disciples and he says this, take heed and beware of of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth amen many people gauge people by their earthly wealth don't tell me they don't they treat people different they treat the rich different than the poor. And that's a sin. Amen. The Bible says a poor man is better than a liar. And I've met a lot of rich liars. I've met a lot of poor liars too, but I've met some rich. <laughs> Smile at me. Praise God. Hallelujah. It says a poor man is better than a liar. Amen. Hallelujah. Because that poor man could have great riches. Hallelujah in God. Now, it says, take heed and beware. Everybody say, beware. beware. It said, beware of covetousness. How many have ever read where it says the love of money? Didn't say money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. Amen. Because when you love money, matter of fact, in the Spanish language, Spanish language is a little bit different than the English language because, amen, in the English language, we can say that they love money. But in the Spanish language, you can only say you love humans and, or God. You can't, the language does not give a word for it's, it's, you like these things. Man, I love apple pie. No, you like apple pie. But you should love God. Those are the things that have got value. Amen. Me and Brother Wakefield were talking. He said, I want to show you something. He said, there's, there's no word in the Spanish language that, that, amen, that shows love for, amen, things. It's only like. Amen. And I thought, you know, hallelujah. Amen. How many have met people that really thought they loved? Amen. Now, whew, boy, this is going to get touchy here. Amen. Hallelujah. We should love people and use things. But there are some people that use people and love things. They use people. Amen. Matter of fact, they buy their love. You can buy a prostitute, but you can't buy a wife. Come on. If you got to buy your kisses and you buy your friends, you need some different friends. If the only time you've got friends around is when you're buying the alcohol, come on, and the... 
and the drugs and you got gas in your car. How many remember those kind of friends? Anybody? Maybe you didn't have any friends. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. And they would, they'd hook up with you if you had these material things. Hallelujah. Amen. But let me tell you something. Amen. It's important to understand that a life does not consist of things that you possess. Although it affects people. Amen. Some people think they're not worth much if they don't have designer clothes. If you'd humble yourself and go to Goodwill, you could dress like me. You don't know whether I got it at Goodwill or, or Jesse Penney. How many have ever seen somebody, amen, that uh, got a new car? And they thought they were just a cut above everybody else. Bam! <laughs> Don't rejoice at your brother's calamity when that happens. But it happens. Because pride goes before destruction. You can be proud of things that you have in your hands. But they ain't always going to be in your hands. How many have ever heard about a fool and his money go separate ways? Them old, mm, I'm preaching here. Them old miners, they'd get out there and they would, they'd work for 16 hours a day, get wet, amen, cold water, mud, hallelujah, amen. And they'd go into town, amen, and the people in town knew about 50 different ways to separate that miner from his gold. And we're talking in the early 1800s. Amen. They were selling a chicken egg. An egg. For a dollar. Bacon. Five bucks for just a little bit. You got gold. Well, come on now. Can't eat gold. So you got and then there would be card sharks. And they were, they were so good. And this is, amen, where the gullible and the naive of, especially people that are raised in the church, they, they do not know, amen, how people are con artists out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And they'll let you win a little bit and then lose a little bit. And win a little bit and then they'll lose a little bit more. Then they know how to play the game. Some of y'all don't know that, but they know how to play the game. A guy playing pool, he knows how to rack them up and even let you win the first game. And then they'll play kind of sloppy. Then all of a sudden, there's 500 bucks sitting in the middle of the deal and he clears the table with eight shots. And you're going, I've been took. But that's the spirit of the world. The God of this world knows how to rip you off of things that really aren't treasure. But he also knows when you've really got treasure, like the Holy Ghost. Oh, that prayer time, that's not valuable. You can miss church. And that, that really, that... Amen. You can make it up some other time. Come on. It's nothing. It's nothing, saith the buyer. Come on. Amen. You show him a 1970 Chevelle and this guy goes, Where'd you get that bucket of rust? Come on now. 
Do you need that car? Well, I think I'm very, very. You better know what things are worth. You better know what you're experiencing God is worth, young lady. You better know what your virtue is worth. Because once somebody has taken it from you, you can't buy it back. You can't pray it back. And that goes for young men too. Hallelujah. Amen. Your life doesn't, amen, consist of things that you possess. Hallelujah. But your greatest treasure is the one that possesses you. Amen. So, hallelujah. He said, beware. Everybody say, beware. beware. Amen. Because certain things can look like a blessing, but they can keep you out of church. I watch when, when teenagers get cars. Because, hallelujah, if they're out of control, they'll be everywhere. I tell them, you make sure there's no females in that car ever. There's no sinners in there ever. Come on. Oh, come on. We can we can drive. Well, what if what if the pastor sees? Let me tell you, I am the least of your worries. God already sees it. God saw it when you were thinking. I'm not God and I don't try to play God. God, hallelujah. But, amen. Woo. Mm. That's good preaching. Hallelujah. I've seen a lot of people get in trouble with cars and trucks. Hello? Amen. I read about this lady that had a Ferrari spider. You read about that lady? She was caught doing 187 mile an hour in a 70. And you know what she told the state trooper? I thought I was only doing 100. That, that's stupid to tell a state trooper you're only doing I thought I was only doing 100 that's stupid I, I, I think she didn't have time to think up a better lie like oh I was man that's why people ask they say Brother Charles, do you have any tattoos on your body? No. Because you don't put a bumper sticker on a Ferrari. You don't see a bumper sticker on a Ferrari. You see a bumper sticker on an old car. But you don't see a bumper sticker on a valuable car. Where somebody says, you ain't got any tattoos, no. And I don't want any. I want God to know this body belongs to Him. Now, if you got tattoos, hallelujah, cover them up. I said, cover them up. Don't be proud of them. Hallelujah, that's the mark of sin. And I'm not proud of what the devil did, hallelujah, in trying to use my body, hallelujah, for His purposes. We lived in the fast lane, but there's a price for it. The wage of sin is death. Everybody say death. Amen. Hallelujah. You can be seated. Amen. Hallelujah. You tell them I'm a Ferrari. Hallelujah. Come on. Amen. You see them tattoos 40 years later.
Come on, somebody. Amen. You know, there are, there are churches in town. Amen. One of them kind of sounds like the cornerstone. But you can get tattoos over there. And you can pierce your body and you can shack up with people. And you can have babies out of wedlock and they'll dedicate them. But not in an apostolic church. There are some things that are valuable to somebody that understands, amen, what kind of treasure they possess. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which you have of God. And you're not to own. We've got to remember that we were bought with a price. We are not our own anymore. We can't do with our body and our mind and our members because, amen, we don't own ourselves anymore. We're bought with a price to glorify God in your body and in your spirit. You, God owns you. We need to thank God He owns us because you know what He's going to do? He's going to come back for what He paid for. Oh, let's clap our hands to Jesus. He thought you were valuable. Can't impress God with the car you drive, the house you live in. Hello? Yes, God. You believe that? Amen. How many want to impress Him with your faith? With God? Hallelujah. You've entrusted me with the Holy Ghost. I want you to walk in me. Amen. I'm not going to allow, amen, junk to be put in this body or on this body. Because it belongs to God. If I say it belongs to God. If I say I'm bought with a price. Amen. Your body, your spirit. Amen. Hallelujah is the temple. Everybody say the temple yes, of the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 You can be seated. <laughs> Amen. Now, if it ain't your house, you better ask the owner if you're going to paint it. <laughs> now, you can paint a house, but we don't paint our fingernails. <laughs> Toes. We don't even use clear fingernail. Anything that goes on the lips doesn't have any color. But there are some that just want to put on this stuff and then they walk around. They're afraid to, to swallow because they think they might have so much petroleum on their lips. Might get acid reflex or something if they... Take care of your body. If you don't, you'll pay somebody to take care of it. But don't worship your body. Just take care of it. Eat right. Take care of it. Amen. No man ever yet hated his own flesh, but cherished it and nourished it. Even as the Lord, the church. God takes care of his church. The church is his body. He wants you to be healthy. Amen. But we don't need glitter on the outside. We don't need glitter in children's hair. Hey, they're cute without anything in the come on. We don't want jewelry in the hair. We don't want things that are fake jewelry in the hair. That's the that's the Babylon church. That's the Catholic church. They're decked with gold. And if you read anything about the Catholic church right now, amen, their priests are a bunch of perverts. They don't value people. Yes. They don't care whether. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. And some people are just too ashamed to say what they've done. <laughs> we need to thank God for truth. Yes. Come on, somebody. Yes. Now, amen. Everybody say your body. Is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Everybody say your soul. What will a man give in exchange? If you're willing to give something in exchange for your soul, then you don't know what your soul's worth. Woo. 
These guys that say, I love you, and if you really love me, you'd. They don't love you. Amen. Amen. You know what you need to do, young ladies? You have my permission. Ball up your fist, and from here to here, just go, whack! What's that for? Amen. For talking to me like a piece of trash. Hello? Or reach over and go wacko. You wacko. Hallelujah. On a scale of one, amen. To weird, you're weird. Leave me alone. Come on. We need some people with some conviction. What's your virtue worth? God gave you that body. God, God gave you a testimony. Keep it. Keep it. It's valuable. Amen. Hallelujah. If they love you, they'll wait. You can be seated. I say praise the Lord. Praise amen. The Lord. If they don't love you, they'll use you. Right. And that's what's happened to it. Amen. People get they get used and then they go on to the next one. Right. Now I could I could just quote scripture and we need we need real time. Yes. We need to deal with issues. Come on, how many want say it the way it is? Tell it like it is. I must say, tell it like it is. Amen. Hallelujah. How many ever noticed, amen, Jesus didn't use all these fancy words. I'm afraid of preachers that you got to such and you got the Bible and then you have to have a dictionary and go. This guy must be smarter than Jesus because Jesus didn't talk like that. Paul. Amen. He said, we use great plainness of speech. Not with enticing words of man's wisdom. You know what man's wisdom is? That's the spirit of the world. Because they're trying to impress people. Hallelujah. With how smart they are. Come on. We're all made out of the same stuff. We all need God. We all need the plain word of God. That's all I'm going to say about that. We use great plainness of speech. Hello? Can you say praise the Lord? Praise now, the Lord. amen. Amen. I guarantee you that man at the gate called Beautiful was glad the preacher's pockets were empty. I got some lifesavers. Not because you need one, of course, but just... <laughs> I want to show them empty pockets here. Sometimes it's good not to have that kind of treasure. Are you with me? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. If he would have had two bucks, he could have went ka ching and went in and prayed. There are places, amen, that got silver and gold, but they don't have the miracle power. I'm just going to tell you something. Hallelujah. God is a miracle working God. Yes. And if you've got money, he'll exchange your money. But if you ain't got money, it's miracle time. Right. Right. It's God, we ain't got money. Can you imagine us trying to buy this property right now? Amen. We could. I said, we Acreage is worth more than our whole debt. Hello? Amen. But you know what? When you ain't got is that? When you ain't got money and you got faith in God, you've got it all. Because God can open up the window. Come on, son. Peter didn't have a doctor's degree. 
But he said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and come on somebody. He was giving him the greatest treasure that we also have been given. We've been given a name. I said the name has been given to us. You ain't to use the name of Jesus. It's faith. God's given us some blank checks with pre-signed. Don't matter what your name is, it don't take co-signature. All right? Anything you ask in my name, he said, I'll do it. But you gotta have faith. But you know what? You gotta believe that. You gotta believe that God wants to give you. I mean, it's like people make things. Why would God want to give me the Holy Ghost? Because He's good. Amen. Why would God want to give me a miracle? Amen. My, amen. I don't have anything in this world. Because God's your Father now. And the earth is the Lord. And even the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. I watch God turn the heart of plumbers, electricians. I had people I never, hallelujah, met before calling me from 200 miles away saying, amen, I'm going to do this for you and your church. I said, who is this? Hallelujah. But God, come on. You've got a line to God in prayer. You're rich. Don't take the time. God has chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith. I'm going to tell you, God don't choose a whole lot of rich folks. That's right. Now, God will bless you after you start. Some people are a lot, lot better off. But how they got there, they were poor, but they learned to give. Amen. I don't believe that way. You believe what you want. Hello? Whosoever hath, to him shall be given. And he shall have more in abundance. Amen. He said, I'll open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing. Is God a liar? No, he's not. Faith is substance and evidence. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This man told me he got $3 an hour raise. But you know where? Amen. He, he said, Brother Charles, I heard you saying, you need to pay tithe on what you want to make. And he said, I did and got you. Did Jesus say, as your faith is, so be it. If you, have, if you believe God can do it, then couple it with my father wants to do it for your natural father. Don't compare him to God. Your God's a giving God. He's a good God. He wants to increase your faith. He wants to bless you. He wants to take you to heaven. I mean, billions of years rent free. What what is deal? I mean, you're giving up cigarettes and stupidity and. Cancer, Amen. cirrhosis of the liver, That's right. yellow skin, and yes, sir. friends that steal your girlfriend when you're not looking at them. Boy, family, you come on now. <laughs> and this boyfriend's got three of them because he's got two. two, two. <laughs> and I hope they get busted all right. by all three of the girls and just put the wood dog on them for being a Skunk. But God can change skunks. Hallelujah. I don't believe that God can change a skunk into a sheep. So he did me. You know, we don't want to admit who we were. Amen. There's never been so many low-priced people with so many high-priced clothes on. Right. Because they think, hey man, if we've got this and we've got... 
But let me tell you what, there's some people, hallelujah, that have got faith that are changing people's destiny forever. Hallelujah. Now, those are great treasures. How many believe you have some treasures? Amen. How I many believe every scripture is a part of your treasure? Praise God. Now, <laughs> amen. Uh, let's, let's look at some things here. Amen. So, let's get back to Luke. Amen. The parable says, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. And he thought, everybody thought with, amen, everybody say he thought within himself. How many have ever thought some things without saying anything? Anybody here never had that experience? <laughs> You should be thinking before you do anything. Right. Right. And think and praying before you do certain things. Right. Hello? Right. Amen. All right? You've got to have good judgment. Right. Amen. How many want God in all your thoughts? Amen. Now, this man was kind of excluding God. Amen. And I want you to know the language here. Hallelujah. As you see this with me in verse 17. Everybody say within himself, saying, what shall I do? Everybody say, I. I. Instead of me and God, it's just me. It's I. Everybody needs that jungle jam, hallelujah, story on I, 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 I. And the trouble you get in when it's all about you. What shall I do because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? They weren't God's. And this shows bad stewardship. If I say a steward, amen, is over somebody else's goods. Everything we have really isn't ours. It's God. Hank, Hank, we're, we're going to hit another one right before a man goes to hell, okay? And it's about stewardship. And God is showing the danger of thinking that what you have is yours. Now, look at this. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Next verse. Stay up. Hallelujah. He said, this will I do. Everybody say, I. I, I. I will pull down my and build greater and there will i bestow all my fruits and my goods that sounds like this guy's got a problem god's not in the picture god didn't give him those barns god didn't give him rich earth to bring forth fruit now wait a minute who's talking here I say, man, I wish Jesus was talking tonight. Do you? Right, man. Do you really? Come on now. Woo. I got some people. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, amen. In verse 19, this is what he says. Hallelujah. I will say to my soul. Doesn't belong to his soul doesn't belong to God. I will say to my soul, soul, thou hast much goods. It, it shows that he doesn't really have, he's got a lot of outward, he doesn't want to have a lot of understanding on the inside. Amen. And he's telling his soul that you have much good. Now, let me stop right here. How many that do have the Holy Ghost understand? I've got to pray every day. I can't make it without you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. How many believe God taught us to pray? Our Father. Hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come. 
your will be done on earth. That's the Lord's too. Amen. As it is in heaven. And that's God's too. Give us this day. How many believe there's no eyes in that prayer? It's not all about you. It's about the kingdom of God. It ain't just about your family, ma'am. It's about the whole church. It's not just about, amen, amen. It's, you've got to understand you're part of something. Right. Amen. That God owns. Now, you were saying it that, amen, uh, God owns me. I believe God owns everything. Amen. All right? So, we, if we get these concepts, amen, hallelujah, amen. God will give you, God knows who to bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I almost said something. Hallelujah. But hallelujah. I want to keep I want to keep the blessing. Now, amen. He said, So you have much goods laid up for many years. How many believe that is? Amen. You you got so much in your soul, you don't have to pray for years, man. Amen. We'll see you at Christmas and Easter. I know some people really get fed because that's the only time I see them. I thought, man, whatever I preached, I need to preach that because, boy, they're eating on that for eight months. Whew, I'm going to have to, somebody's going to have to remind me of some of the notes. Uh, some folks, I mean, it's just got some sustenance there. Now, he said, take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. That doesn't sound like he's got a whole lot of stuff upstairs, does it? I believe there's a lot of people in this world just partying like there's no tomorrow. Come on now. Come on. They're not waiting until the weekend, folks. I mean, it's Monday through Sunday. Hello? Come on. Jesus said when he come, they'd be eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. Till the flood came and took them all away. They'd be buying and selling. They're, but they're not buying the truth and selling it not. They're not building on the rock. There's a lot of commerce. There's a lot. Come on. The Bible said when Jesus comes, the economic situation of the world, hallelujah, would be booming. That's blessing. Not when you have, amen, three out of four marriages in divorce in America. Come on. Oh, God bless America. Let me tell you what. The more people have, the, less, the more they forget God. God even warned me. He said, when I give you all of these things and you got wells you didn't dig and vineyard. He said, you beware lest you forget me. Come on. You know, the poor people got to keep praying. But the people, in this instance, amen, he said, take thy knees, eat, drink, and be merry. Now, what did God say? God said unto him, fool. Everybody say fool. fool. Who said that? God did. Thou is italicized. First words out of God's mouth was fool. Amen. This night, amen, you can be a rich man and in just a few moments have nothing. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I mean, nothing. Amen. Not even have your body anymore. Right. Do you believe that? Right. Amen. He said, this night, God said, this night, your soul is going to be required of thee. He said then. Who shall those things be. Which thou hast provided. Amen. Hallelujah. How many have ever seen. Amen. I've, I've heard about rich people. That didn't even have time to. Amen. Make a will. Because they never thought they were going to die. People don't think they're going to die. 
I've seen, I've seen little ones die. I've seen eight-year-olds. I've seen teenagers. I've seen 30-year-old mothers. I've seen almost every age group. Come on. Amen. Go meet their God. How many believe death doesn't have an age? Come on. Come on. Doesn't say how old this man was, but it said he, amen, was a wealthy man. Barnes. Amen. He owned fields and barns. Amen. Hallelujah. But he said everything that you have, someone else is going to get it. Next verse. Do you believe this? Yeah. Now I know I'm preaching to people that think, man, I just... Can we believe it's true? Yes. Amen. Amen. So is he. If I say, so is he. That lays up treasure for himself. If I say, for himself. If I say, for himself. It's all yours. And is not rich toward God. Hallelujah. Amen. How many believe God measures riches a little bit different than your neighbor does? Come on. Now, boy, it's quiet in here. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And God will bless you with a lot of things. Amen. God will give you so much stuff that you'll be given. Two car garage, so you can have two car garage. Hello? Oh my goodness. Let's see what time it is. How many want to be rich toward God? How many want to be rich in God's eyes? Hallelujah. Amen. He that when his souls is is what? I believe that's the greatest treasure. When Jesus, amen, hallelujah, was speaking about this man, hallelujah, amen, hallelujah, this man didn't understand his most valuable asset was his soul. And that was what he was neglecting. He took care of those fields. He probably painted those barns. He made everything look good on the outside. All of his possessions, but he did not understand the value of his soul. Now, let's let's move on here. Hallelujah. Let's go to the same Amen gospel, Luke 16. Now, I'm not going to get into the latter part of 16, but the end of 16 is about a rich man that went to hell. And there was a poor man called Lazarus. Now, amen. He was conversing with the richest man of his day, which was Abraham. So money didn't take him there. You know who's going to hell? People, amen, that don't, hallelujah, have a relationship with God. Rich people are going to heaven. Yes, sir. Poor people are going to heaven. And everything in between. You believe that? You believe that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Now, amen. There are some people that got wealth and they didn't get it illegally. They didn't get it dealing drugs. They didn't get it lying. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, amen. God wants to help us. I'm not going to go there. Praise God. I'm just talking about that. All right. So let's let's look at 16 and 1. Amen. Hallelujah. But I say there was a certain rich man which had a steward. The rich man is God. If I say the rich man is God. He owns it all. And that's. Hallelujah. The rich man. Now. If I say he had a steward. Amen. And the steward was accused by the rich man that he had wasted his goods. That means the rich man's goods. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, how many believe, amen, he 
was angry because this man was not using his goods or his wealth that God had given him wisely. All right? Amen. Hallelujah. He had been given everything that he had by the rich man. The rich man is Jesus. Every good thing you've got, God gave it to you. No man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. The devil didn't give you nothing but a hard time, disease, misery. Come on. I don't care if he promises you the world or fame. Hallelujah. Amen. He promises, but he's not going to deliver. Hallelujah. Now look at this. Verse number two. Amen. He called him. Amen. And said unto him, how is it that I hear this of thee? Give an account. He said, I want you to be accountable of what you have. For you may no longer be steward. And the steward said within himself, what shall I do? For my Lord taketh away from me the stewardship. I cannot dig. Amen. To beg, I am ashamed. I am resolved what to do that when I am put out of the stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So he called everyone his Lord's debtors. Now, they aren't hard to find. They're everywhere. Because they're everybody. Everybody owes the Lord. As it shows here. Amen. He said, what do you owe the Lord? And they, they knew what they owed the Lord, but they only gave a portion of what they owned. Hallelujah. Now, amen. He went to the first and he said, how much do you owe my Lord? Hallelujah. Now, if, if you owe a debt, how many know what you owe? I believe you owe your Lord your life. Amen. And the best years of your life. Amen. The best years of your life. Amen. Don't hand God a bunch of dead roses at the end of life. Amen. Give Him the best years, young person. Come on. Give Him the best you've got. God got a hold of me when I was 20 years old. I wouldn't have got He would have got a hold of me when I was a baby. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. These are the best years of my life. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And I'm telling you, I've never lacked for anything. May not have had the best car to drive, the best house to live in. Praise God. But we were happy. Hello? I felt like we were blessed. Hello? Have the Holy Ghost. Some people get the Holy Ghost. That's how you can do it. Come on. Right, look, come on, somebody. Amen. Verse 6. Let's look at this. And he said, a hundred measures of oil. And he said, set down quickly and write out 50. Amen. Hallelujah. So, amen. Everybody say oil. oil. Everybody say wheat. wheat. And these are symbols, hallelujah, that have to do, amen, amen, with spirituality, actually. I'm going to go into it. He asked the second debtor. Everybody say debtor. He said, how much do you owe? And he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said, take thy bill and write 80. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Next verse. Hallelujah. And the Lord commended, everybody say, the Lord commended, the, Lord commended. the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of life. Let me tell you, people, amen, just because they're sinners don't mean they're stupid. They know how to survive. I'm telling you, amen, they know how to survive without God. Come on, did you, did you have the Holy Ghost? Were you without hope and without God before you got, you were. We learned how to stay alive. And let me tell you something. This ain't all spiritual. People think it's all spiritual.
spiritual. It's not all spiritual. You still got to wash your car. Still got to wash your clothes. Still got to paint your house. Still got to put new tires on your car. Still got to get your transmission fixed. Hello? Hello? Why are you saying this? Because the Lord's got some things to say here. Amen. And he said, Amen. This unjust steward, Amen. Hallelujah. Said, I may not get everything out of the Lord, but I'm going to get something out of it. How many believe you owe the Lord? Now I'm not talking money. I'm talking how many believe you owe God more of your time? Amen. How many believe you owe Him more of your life than what you're giving? Amen. Come on now. How many believe? Is there anybody giving 100%? Come on now. Everybody that they asked said, we owe you 100%. Of this. Hello? But you know what? Even the Lord was willing to take? I'll take half. Because you know some people, he don't get one year of their life. He don't even get weekends from some people. And some people drive about spending an hour or two in church. And they'll spend hours with their friends and hours with co workers and hours with them. Come on. Oh, nice. Hours on the job and don't complain there. Come on. They got free time. That's my time. That's my barn. That's my. Everybody say, I belong to God. Everything I have, God gave me. Everything I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. Every spiritual treasure, every revelation that I have, God gave it to me. I can't say that, amen, I got it, hallelujah, or I, amen. It was the goodness of God that gave it to me. Amen. And freely you have, freely. If I say, amen, if God gives you things, amen, in abundance. Enjoy that chili, brother. Hallelujah. Amen. We made chili and there was enough. And she goes, Who are you gonna give that to? I said, I think somebody over here working on the church is gonna get this. Come on, somebody. Come on. How many have ever how many have ever felt bad because you had so much and it was rotten in your refrigerator? How many have ever got fed so much in a church service? You had to give some way. Yeah, all right. yeah. You felt like that leper going through all those tents. Amen. You had hands slung over your shoulder. You had these bags of stuff. One moment, hallelujah, you were dying of hunger. And the next time, hallelujah, amen. You, they said, we got to go tell the king's house. We, amen. We got so much we can't keep it to ourselves. Amen. How many believe God gives us more than enough? I love that song, more than enough. Because, amen, that's a life living for God. That's a testimony of somebody, hallelujah, living for God. He will give you more than enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. That sounded like an amen, but. Now. Verse number 9. Let's look at this. Hallelujah. 
And I say unto you, make to yourself friends of the mammon of unrighteousness. Everybody say friends. friends. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. How many of you, hallelujah, have ever made a friend to somebody? That, hallelujah, didn't live for God. Come on. Hallelujah. You know Israel's problem is they all just kept to themselves. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But you know what? Hallelujah. When I came to this city, amen, all of a sudden, amen, friends of unrighteous mammon started appearing in my life. One of them was Twan, B.T. Plummet. And I was just a friend to him. I helped him do things. He did things for me. And then one day, I really needed him to help build this church. Right in the middle of the phone call, I was calling Tatro. He wouldn't have given me the deal. That one did. Hello? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. And when you make friends of the unrighteous man, when you need them, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. You can give them something. Hallelujah. And they can give you something. And what you're giving them in the spiritual is more valuable than what they're giving you in the material. Now, not everybody sees the way God sees all of this. Amen. You can read about the Apostle Paul and, amen, there was a runaway slave that came to the Apostle Paul. I mean, never read that. Amen. And uh, I think it's the letter of Philemon. And, uh, amen. And he's talking about him and he says, I know he ran away from you, but now he's our brother. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. And he said, amen, whatever you've lost, and I'm just paraphrasing this. He said, whatever you've lost, he said, I'll pay it with my own hand. Amen. He said, I'll be it. He said, you owe me your own soul besides. The reason you're saved is because I preached you the gospel. But you owe me more than I owe you. Come here. I don't owe the preacher anything. Amen. I'm here to tell you. Hallelujah. That's a sick and a sorry spirit to have. You wouldn't have a place to come and pray. You wouldn't have a place. And when you give, amen, material things in tithe and offering, and he gives you spiritual things, who's getting the better end of it? And Paul says the same thing. Some people want to rob God. Amen. I don't owe God anything. I don't owe my life. Come on. When you get to, amen, when you get to thinking those things within yourself, you're robbing yourself. Everybody say you're robbing yourself. Hallelujah. Amen. There, God will put people in your life. Amen. Amen. He said when you give, it said men shall give into your bosom. Is that what he said? Come on. Did God say? God said men are going to come and just. And they may not always be Christians. How many work for a Christian? No, sir. Anybody? I'm the only one working for a Christian. <laughs> Are you working for Christ? I said, Are you working for Christ? Do you want all your pay right now? Come on. Or do you want something? In heaven. Now, I want to believe God mentioned about prayer and you know, and he said they have their payment in full. Yes. Right. Amen. Right. You don't want your payment full down here. Hallelujah. How many want a reward in heaven? Amen. Amen. Paul talked about the church. He said, You're my joy and my crown. 
Hallelujah. So stand fast in the Lord. Hallelujah. But he was talking about you can make friends of the unrighteous man. And then, hallelujah, amen, you can, amen, get them to hear the gospel. And they can, amen, be eternally blessed just like you. I only believe God came in this world to save sinners. You know what we need to do? We need to find sinners. We need to find people that think they're really lost. Amen. Now, this is this is where we've got to understand. Hallelujah. You don't always have to talk about God to win them to God. Amen. I believe when he talked to farmers, he said a sower went forth to sow. When he talked to the fishermen he had chosen, amen, he said, I'm going to make you a fisher of men. And he starts stimulate, stimulating his thinking. Come on now. He was using, amen, his trade to speak into things, amen. Right. Hallelujah. I believe if God gets a hold of a mechanic, hallelujah, amen. He'll talk, man, you need a tune-up, dude. You need an oil change. You need to know what brakes to do. You need some keys to start this thing. It's going. Come on. Hello. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. You know, he can get a hold of a woman. She can be. She can wash some clothes and then hold it up and go. Man, that stain didn't come out all of a sudden. You got this little spot. You got this little problem. You got this little bitterness. You got this little thing on your heart. You should have scrubbed it before you put it in. You're throwing everything in instead of working on the little spots before you. You're just dumping everything down there. You're saying, God, forgive me of my sin instead of, forgive me, God, of this jealousy. Amen. When I when I worked in aircraft, amen. And and things were very precise. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. It shows, amen, how little tolerance there really is for things, amen, that are put together well. Three tenths of one thousandths of an inch is less than a hair. Hello? Come on. Because it 35,000 feet and 700 miles an hour. You don't want wind coming through the windshield. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. And God starts talking to these people. Hallelujah. Amen. In their own language. And that's why God's got you on certain jobs. How many believe they've got their all? They've got their own language. You got to learn to, Amen. Paul said, "I become all things to all men." Come on, to the wise I became wise. Come on, Amen. And the more you can talk to more different kinds of people, the more valuable you are in the kingdom. If you can talk to the poor as well as the rich. Come on. The wise as well as the unwise, the educated as well as the young. Come on, somebody. Paul said, I'm going to come down to that man's way of thinking so that he can be received into everlasting habitation. <laughs> Amen. That's why God said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and what? Glorify God with you in the day of visitation. Amen. How many want to let your light shine? How many believe you have been given so much? Amen. The question is how much have we been giving away? Hallelujah. How many want to give? Amen. What you have freely been given. How many owe somebody the gospel? Come on. I said how many owe somebody the gospel? Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. 
Amen. We're talking about true treasure. How many believe we have this treasure in earthen vessels? Amen. And God wants to give. Amen. Let me tell you what. The thing about this treasure, the more you give of your treasure, the more he'll give back. Amen. Everybody say, give and it shall be. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together. Running over. Hallelujah. He that watereth shall be watered himself. Come on. Amen. I know this is very simple, but we've got to learn to take, hallelujah, these beautiful, simple truths and put them into practical, everyday outreach and reaching for the most valuable thing in our city, which is people. If I say it's souls, if I say it's souls, if I say it's souls, and how many believe it's not hard to find a debtor? Everybody owes God. How many believe you owe him your praise? Give the glory due to his. Is that say due? How many believe in your worship? You're paying your due. You're paying what you owe him. Come on. I owe him Thanksgiving. Come on, somebody. He's done so much for me. And you know what? He doesn't trust, but he does want me to be thankful. He does want me to be thankful because you know what thankfulness does. Hallelujah. Amen. When you're giving to people. Amen. Hallelujah. It keeps their spirit right. He doesn't owe us. Amen. Anything. Praise God. But he gives us everything we possess. Amen. How many believe he asks so little really in return? Amen. God really asks so little in return. Could we stand right now? Hallelujah. Amen. Could we lift our hands? Could we lift our hearts? Could we lift our voice? Hallelujah to God right now. Hallelujah. What do you owe the Lord in thanksgiving? Amen. Have it, do you have your account paid in full in thanksgiving to God? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Have you given 50% or, hallelujah, have you given your whole heart? Hallelujah. Amen. He said, seek me with your whole heart. Hallelujah. Amen. He said, that's where you're going to find me. Praise God. When you've given, hallelujah, that whole heart. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, when you've made that diligent effort. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Praise God where it's no longer, amen, mine, but, oh God, hallelujah, it's us, 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 hallelujah, our Father. It's not just my Father, but it's ours. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I've got a lot of brothers and sisters, but we've only got one Father. I said we've only got one Father. Hallelujah. And he's able to bless everyone in his church family. He's able to give. Hallelujah. What you need. Amen. Amen. Above and beyond. Hallelujah. Amen. Good measure. Shake. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Overflowing from a Sunday night service. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Have you laid up for yourself treasure in heaven? Hallelujah. Amen. Do you have souls that are going to go with you to heaven? We're not going to take cars. We're not going to take clothing. We're not going to take anything that has got intrinsic worldly value with us. When he said their works do follow them, that treasure, come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many souls are going to follow you to heaven? How many souls are you going to influence? Hallelujah. It's not hard to find a debtor. Hallelujah. Praise God and how willing they are to give something. Hallelujah. Of their life. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe, maybe, amen. It's talking about somebody that's going to live to be 60 years old. And he said, write down 50. So, hey, give 
give your life right now if you're 30 and give the rest of your life to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody in here has got the power to be a witness. Amen. And I believe he's given more than enough to every one of us. Hallelujah. To hand out a card to somebody. Tell them how good God has been to you. Amen. The word of your testimony. How God saved you. Hallelujah. What you used to be. Give somebody some hope. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. It's not how many barns we have. Hallelujah. It's not how much fruits that we have. Hallelujah. In that realm. Praise God. Amen. Amen. That's not how God measures a rich man. Hallelujah. He called that man a fool. Because it was all about him. I said it was all about him. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know what happens after God saves you? You start thinking about saving other people. Hallelujah. Amen. That's right thinking. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. We you don't come to church and it's all about you. God, I want this. I want this. Lord God, can you do this for me? Hallelujah. But when you get in that place, oh God. Hallelujah. Bless my friend. Bless my friend. Bless my neighbor. Bless my co-worker. Hallelujah. Bless this missionary. Oh God, I feel a burden, God, for his family. Hallelujah. I owe that. I may only be able to give him ten dollars a month or whatever, but I can support him in prayer. Hallelujah. I owe him hallelujah. Amen. Some tongue talking time. Hallelujah. I owe my brother. I am my brother's keeper. I want to see him make it to heaven. I want to see everybody in the house living for God, ready to meet God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Amen. Amen. He said, lay not treasures on this earth. Amen. How many treasures? Hallelujah. How many people will, will wear a crown? Hallelujah. Because of you. We'll wear a robe of righteousness. Because you taught them how to be covered. Hallelujah. Amen. How many people did you bring out of sin's prison? Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. Come on. Let's take just a little time and do a little inventory here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Am I wasting my master's goods? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, oh God, hallelujah, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, praise God, it takes both to move the gospel, we give missionaries good offerings, but we also give them spiritual things, hallelujah, amen, encouragement from our soul to theirs, prayer, hallelujah, when they're no longer, come on somebody, hallelujah, hallelujah, your prayer can make a difference, amen, you're, you're showing them your appreciation can make a difference to them, hallelujah, they can leave here and say, oh, hallelujah, they're excited about the work of God, amen, Hallelujah. There's a reciprocation. Hallelujah. Amen. They feed us. Hallelujah. With the riches of His Word. Hallelujah. That's why Paul said that I might preach. Amen. Hallelujah. The unsearchable riches. He said I'm making poor people rich. People, hallelujah, that are without hope and without God. People that are on the point and verge of suicide given a reason to live through the gospel hallelujah hallelujah 
People that are depressed can have the joy that God gave us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. There's treasure in the house of the wise. Oh, there's treasure in the house of the wise. Hallelujah. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's given us pearls. He's given us the royal diamonds. So don't cash, don't give pearls to people that don't appreciate. But but find somebody, hallelujah, that knows the value of a pearl. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. He said, You've got some jewels. Amen. Hallelujah. Trade with the same. Praise God. Iron sharpeneth iron. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh God, in Jesus' name, make to yourself friends of those people. Amen. So one day they can share that eternal habitation with you in heaven. That's the real treasure. He wasn't changing the subject. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the real treasure you're laying up. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Young and old. Hallelujah. I said young and old were debtors. Amen. I've never felt like my debt has been paid. Hallelujah. As long as there's one more soul that I've not, not preached the gospel to. How many feel like you? Whether they receive it or not, I owe it to them. Hallelujah. How many believe we've got to feel like we owe this world the gospel before we give it to them? Amen. How many don't pay debts? Amen. To people you don't know. Come on. Amen. If you... If you have Wheatland Electric, you don't pay it to Garden City Electric. You don't owe it to But hallelujah. Amen. How many believe we owe everybody this gospel? Do you feel that way? I want you to leave this house with this challenge. I owe everybody I meet. I owe everybody in the church a good example. Come on. I owe that to you. Amen. Come on. How many feel like you owe everybody in the church to be a good example? If you feel like you owe it, then you know what you'll do? You'll be a good example. Come on. How many want to pray for everybody in the church? You say, I don't owe that. To you. We do. We owe it to. This is the realm of our responsibility. Amen. When I preach, it's for everybody. How many believe this word is for everybody here tonight? Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. How many want to be good soil? I said, how many want to be good soil? And how many want to, with an honest heart, bring forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty? Hallelujah. Let's clap our hands to the Lord. Let's thank God that He has chosen us. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen.